Hi there, I hope you enjoyed the last Pattern Fundamentals video highlighting the two essential techniques of manipulating flat patterns. If you missed it, go back and watch it. You'll need to complete that exercise before moving on to this one. I'm Alexander Morgan, founder of In-House Patterns and instructor at In-House Patterns Studio. I teach experienced sewers and budding pattern makers how to make and adjust patterns for fit and style. If you haven't already done so, download the free scale block patterns so you can practice your pattern making along with me. You'll find that link below this video. This week, we're going to continue on by refining the patterns we created in the last video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to true your darts, but I'm also going to add some inside information on how you can control dart volume in cases where you have a very large dart width. I'm pretty sure you won't find that information anywhere else. So let's get started. Now let's go ahead and finish the pattern work for the dart rotations that we did last week. So I'm going to show you how to true your darts and also how to establish the dart roof on this example of the neck dart exercise that we already had completed. Now the first thing that you want to do when you are truing your darts is make sure that you do have some paper beneath the dart opening that you created. You're going to need this to establish the dart and the dart roof. The next thing you want to do is find the midpoint of the dart opening here. So what I'm going to do is just take my ruler and measure the distance between these two dart legs right at the contour of the pattern where they intersect here. And once you have that, you're just going to find that midpoint. So it's going to be at about this area right here. Now, once you've established that, you're going to join that point to the bus point. I'm going to be using a dotted line because I don't want to um, mistake it for one of the dart legs. So I want to make sure that I understand that this is the center line of the dart and not a dart leg. Now, most of you already know this, but a dart point must not land right on the bust point. We need to pull it back some to give some ease over the bust. So the standard number for that is to pull it back by one inch. So that's the minimum amount. You may want to pull it back to up to two inches. Now pulling it back up to two inches will give you more ease over the bust. So it's a really good idea if you have a larger cup size to pull it back a little bit more. The standard point is about one inch. So I'm working at about half scale here. You can use the scaled rulers that I provided with your scaled block patterns to actually indicate the distance for you. But since I'm working in a little bit bigger scale, I'm just going to use my grid ruler to mark the new dart point. Okay, so I've just made a little point here that is one inch away from the bust point. Now once I have that new dart point, I need to redraw my dart legs because I want to intersect with this new dart point. I'm going to use the same position up here for my dart leg and I'm just going to redraw those dart legs. Okay, so now I've established my new dart legs with the dart point pulled back from the bust point by about one inch. Now the next thing I need to do is figure out what kind of dart roof that I need in order to finish off this neckline neatly when I have my dart already sewn. So what we're going to have to do now is fold out our dart. So we're going to be folding along the dart leg here nearest to center front. And the reason for that is because we want this dart volume, so whatever's inside here, to be pressed toward the center front. So I'm always going to choose to fold the dart leg that's closest to the direction that I want to press my dart volume. So I'm going to press this dart leg first. So just folding along that line. And then I'm going to place my finger at the dart point so that I can then bring my dart leg over to meet the other dart leg. Okay, so you can see here that we have like a really nice continuation of the neckline. So this is the original neckline shape. Now, once you have that, you're going to then retrace this neckline shape. And you can see here, actually, if we go down toward the bust point here, do you see this gap between the old dart legs or the 
slash line that we created initially, this is that ease I was talking about that you're going to be getting over the bus when you pull that dart point back. So we're going to take our tracing wheel and we're going to just trace over our existing neckline shape here. So what you're doing here is just creating perforations through all layers of the paper here. And when you open it up, you may not be able to see it yet on this camera view, but I'm going to trace it in for you. You're going to get your dart roof. So following those little perforations that you created, you'll be able to draw in the dart roof. Okay, so this is how you will true up your dart and create your dart roof. The process is the same for each of the dart positions that I've already shown you. The only thing that changes is the direction that you press the dart volume. So the general rule is, is that vertical darts like the neckline dart, the shoulder dart, or the waistline dart are all pressed toward center front. Horizontal darts like an armhole dart, a side bust dart, or a French dart, or the bust line dart here are all pressed downward. So in other words, this dart volume here is pressed down toward the waistline. So you'll see here, if I show you the French dart here, that this dart volume is going to be pushed down and pressed toward the waistline. So just flipping that over, you can see here's the dart volume pressed down. Vertical darts, as I said, will be pressed toward center front. So here is the shoulder dart. And if I just fold that for you, you can see that the dart volume is actually going toward center front here. So this is the general rule. On production patterns in the fashion industry, you're going to find that the side bust dart, the French dart, and the shoulder dart here are often pressed in the opposite direction. And I want to show you why. Here we have our examples of the shoulder dart, the side bust dart, and the French dart. Now you're going to notice here that on top I have the shoulder dart here and I've got an example of the dart as it's pressed toward the center front following that general rule I talked about. Now, what you're also going to see here is the shoulder dart with the dart volume pressed in the opposite direction. So in other words, the dart volume is actually going toward the armhole in this case. And the reason that you might see this done in production instead of moving it toward center front is the fact that it makes a completely different dart roof depending on the direction that you fold the dart volume. So in production, you might choose to press the dart volume toward the armhole in order to save fabric. Now I want to show you another example of that and that is the side bust dart here. And the same principle applies. This one here is the dart volume when it is pressed down as the general rule that I told you about. This one, which is the original pattern, scale block pattern that I gave you, the dart volume is pressed up. You can see here it creates two completely different dart roofs. Once again, this one is going outside of the pattern contour, meaning it's going to actually take up a little bit more fabric. And when I lay my pattern pieces on my fabric, I'm not going to be able to get the patterns as closely together on this pattern as I would be able to get on this pattern. And I just have one more example, which hopefully you will be able to really see the difference. And this is on the French dart. So you can see here as well, this is following the rule of pressing that horizontal dart down toward the waistline. So you can see here, once again, that volume's going down. This dart volume is pressed up, creating a completely different dart roof. And you can see quite clearly in this example how much fabric you can actually save by pressing your dart volume in another direction. So you're going to find on most of the patterns that I do is going to be following this production rule where I'm trying to save fabric so that I can place my pattern pieces more closely together and be a little bit more efficient with fabric usage. Now let's talk about managing dart volume. Sometimes a dart may have a very large dart volume or dart width. 
This will often happen when you've combined darts, as we have done here in this French dart example, or if you've made quite a large full bust adjustment. Now when you sew up this large dart volume, the result can be quite pointy or just not fit as smoothly as you would like. So when this problem arises, it can be really helpful to split the single dart into two parallel darts. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. So in order to start out the process, what we need to do is find a distance of about one inch away from the bust point along these existing slash lines that we created here. So I'm working in half scale here. So I'm just going to measure down here using my grid ruler the one inch full scale amount here. So I'm measuring down half inch in this case. And I'm gonna do this on each of my dart legs. So again, measuring from the bust point along the slash line of the dart leg here, and just making little cross marks here. From there, I am going to draw a perpendicular line from the dart leg extending out. So I have a 90 degree angle extension on each side here from the dart leg. So you'll see here, there's a 90 degree angle here and here. And these marks are one inch away from the bus point. Now the next thing I'm going to determine is where I want my two darts to be situated. So I'm going to create two parallel darts instead of this one single dart. So I'm going to just plan that my dart, two darts are going to be one inch away from each other. So what I'm going to do is using my grid ruler, I'm going to mark a half inch away from the existing dart leg I have here. And I'm drawing a parallel line to the dart leg. I'm gonna do that on the other side as well, so that I have a distance of a total of one inch. So I'm going to mark my slash lines a half inch away on either side. From this point here, where it intersects with the perpendicular line that you drew here, you're just going to draw another line that extends to the bus point. So just join those points to the bus point. And you're going to get something that looks like this. It's sort of a little wedge shape here. From there, we are going to slash along these slash lines to the bus point on each side and we're going to create a pivot point right here at the bus point. So once you have that, you can then close your original dart here. So we're just going to pivot the close so that that meets. So we're not overlapping them, we're just having those two existing dart legs meeting each other and I'm just securing them in place. Now what you have are two darts created out of that one original dart, and you can actually shift and pivot this around however you like. What I would suggest you do then is take your little scrap piece of paper so that you know you're gonna fill in that area, and I'm going to place it, secure it in place here on each side. And then I'm just going to place it approximately in the middle. So just a note here, you absolutely don't have to make them even. They can be different widths, but it's probably flattering if they are. So I'm just gonna secure them in place like this. Now from this point, you can now create your darts points and create your dart roof. So again, you definitely want to pull back your dart points by that, at least that one inch. And we've already got this mark. So I'm going to pick the middle point here between the gap here in order to draw my new dart legs. Once I have those, I can then fold out my darts. Now, because they are horizontal darts, we can press them down. This is sort of the standard, most acceptable way. Or if you're like me and wanna save fabric, you can definitely press them up. You can choose whatever you're comfortable with doing. So I'm gonna create that one. And I'm gonna do the same for the other dart. 
and close that to meet. And there you have our two darts folded out with the dart volume going down. Okay, so you can see that. Now what we need to do here now is true up the side seams. So I'm going to be joining those two points. And once I have that line established, I can then go ahead and take my tracing wheel and go over those dart volumes to make sure that I can trace through all the layers my dart roof. Now the smaller dart volume of each of these darts will allow the darts to fit more smoothly and also allow for the shape and volume that is needed. Now that you know how to rotate, true, and manage dart volume on the front bodice, you're going to need to practice. It's time to make the skills you've learned into the skills you have. So grab that free download and try out the exercises we did today. When you complete them, I encourage you to post photos of your work on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter using the hashtag in-house pattern studio. I'd really love to see your work. Next week, we're moving on to the back bodice and sorting out some ways to manage the back shoulder dart without compromising fit. I hope you'll join me. Thanks for watching. I'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.